Do you work really hard to get ahead? Do you struggle? Do you suffer? Do you push? Do you push into the pain? Only to find yourself right back where you started or sometimes worse off. I mean, think about it for a minute. So many people work so hard to get ahead. I mean, if working hard really worked, ditch diggers would be making a lot of money. Uh, construction workers would be making a lot of money. I know people out there that work, struggle and suffer 80 hours a week and yet don't make a lot of money. They don't get ahead. At the end of the week, especially in today's economy, they can barely afford their mortgage. They can't afford to pay their bills. They can't afford to, as a guy, uh, take a girl out on a date. You know, you're you're constantly worried about your money. You're constantly worried about, you know, where how you're going to put food on the table for some people. And I want to talk about this today. I want to talk about this whole idea that if I work really hard, that I push, that I suffer, that I sacrifice today, that in the future I'm going to be happier. And I haven't found that in my personal life with any of my clients' lives to be true. Now, with that said, there's a lot of people out there that do buy into this idea of the struggle. They talk about it. Think about it. Guys like Goggins, you know, get out there, hustle, work, push, push, push. Uh, Dan Pena, you know, you'll get ahead, you'll get there. And I'm not saying that hard work can't create success. It can. And I'm not saying that the success won't feel good for a while. It can. But what I'm really saying is that hard work without understanding, applying it the right way, smart work is really where the problem comes in. You've got to work smart first and then work hard if you want to add hard work to it. Some people I know have created a lot of success without hard work. They've created it with smart work, uh, consistent work, focused work, work that's intentional. That doesn't mean they don't get in there and really dive in and do the work, but they don't create tons of suffering around it. And so many people today, they, they create so much suffering around their work. When you look at guys like Dan Pena, Goggins, well, think about it, man. They love the struggle. They identify with the struggle. There's a part of them that goes into courage. And, you know, you heard me talk about the upper part of the emotional scale, courage and love and peace. And they love it. They thrive on it. You know, get out there, do the work, push, suffer. You're going to get there. And that feeds them. Is that you? Is that really you? Are you that person? When you get out there to push, let's say you go to the gym and I'm going to work my ass off the day and I'm going to go till I, I can barely walk. Do you love that? Or do you walk out of the gym miserable? Do you even want to go back the next day or the next week? This is a big part of the problem today is that if you're going to love the struggle, you've got to really love the struggle. You've got to be built for that. You've got to have programmed your mind to love the struggle, to tell the stories of your struggle because they write whole books about it, make millions of dollars on this, right? I'm going to write a book on how powerful the struggle is. And if you struggle really hard like me, maybe someday you'll be as good as me. But it just doesn't work that way, especially when you look out there and you see people like, I'm going to give you a name you probably never heard of. Maybe some of you have Mark Allen. He is the owner of New World Library, who published Eckhart Tolle originally. And he's like, I never work more than 30 hours a week. I'm lazy. I get out of bed late. He owns multiple businesses and worth millions of dollars. He started with nothing. He was, a, I believe it was a Zen Buddhism. I'm not sure. He was a meditator. And he quit meditation, decided he wanted to start business. And he said his mind said, no, you got to work hard. And I can never work hard. I don't like to work hard. I like to relax and flow. And he got this idea in his head that, no, I do want to start a business. So he made a deal with himself. He said, I'm going to try this for, I think it was for, I don't know how long, let's say a year. You can correct me on that. If you guys know, put it in the comments. I'm going to try this for a bit. And I'm going to see if I can actually start a business, not working hard, but working at max 30 hours a week in a relaxed, easy way. He used to love saying a relaxed, easy way. And he did it. He built this huge publishing company. He became a recording artist. He published his own records. He became a speaker. He is an author himself. And he's done really well for himself, all in an easy, relaxed way. Now, I'm not saying you have to do it in an easy, relaxed way either. You could be naturally that intense a type personality and you love to drive and push and that's you and if that's you that's great just do it in a smart way don't get out there and push yourself and drive yourself for the sake of the struggle itself like use it to get somewhere get somewhere that makes you feel alive it makes you feel like you're living a purpose here and so many people don't do that you see, struggle is necessary in life. We're going to have it no matter what. Pain is optional. 
You know, you've heard that before. Struggle is necessary. Pain is optional. The pain comes from not loving the struggle that you've got in front of you. I love to ski, man. And I struggle all the time. I get out there, I hit the bumps, right? And I'm going to hit a new level of bumps and I'm going to learn to flow faster. And some days my legs are burned out and there's a lot of pain. I get, and then I go back up in a couple of days and I can barely ski. I push so hard. That's not pain to me. That's yeah, there's pain in my body, but I love it. And I know when I hit that point, when I burned myself out and I don't hit flow state that day on my skis, that that just means flow state's coming. It's coming two days from now, three days from now, and I'm going to be better than I've ever been before. I've seen the cycles. I'm old enough. I've seen the cycles up and down in my life. When I have a down day, there's going to be an update. Crypto. I remember when I got into crypto in 2017 and I got all this, this coins and I was like, oh my God, I'm going to make tons of money and everything was going nuts. And then the bear market started and everybody freaked out. People were selling. People were like, we're going to lose all our money. And I just said, you know, at first I stressed, man, I stressed. I looked at it every day. Is it going up? No, it's going down. I'm losing all my money. And then I got a hard wallet, stuck it on a hard wallet, put it away and didn't look. Didn't look for years, I think, a couple years. Looked back and it was all back up again. And that really, it did something to my brain. And I clicked and I went, oh, you know, everything turns around. You know, if you play it smart and you look at it from the big picture, you look, you get that bird's eye view and you look down on it and you're smart about it, you'll see that everything is in cycles. You know, there are some things that do crash, but if you do it right and you're patient and you relax into it, yeah, you're gonna have down days, you're gonna have up days. In the long term, it's gonna go up, keep going up and up and up. And I started to see that with everything. You know, I get rejected one day by a beautiful woman. The next day I'm probably gonna do great. And that stuff started to happen or I, as a child, like I remember being scared of the dark and not wanting to go to sleep and, oh, I don't want, I don't want to be in the dark. And now I love it dark, the darker, the better, right? It's all perspective. It's actually the raising of consciousness. As consciousness raises, you get a bigger and bigger picture of how everything really works. And you begin to see past this whole idea of all this suffering and pain that you thought was real. It's not real. Yeah. You get physical pain and things go wrong and you get sad. But when you have this bird's eye view and this killer perspective, you start to say, yeah, but that too will go away. And then something beautiful like the sunrise will come in its place. Something amazing is going to come in its place. Something better. I can't tell you how many times I've had a relationship end when I was young thinking, oh God, I love her. I'll never meet anybody like her again. And then you get over it and somebody even more amazing comes into your life. And you wonder why you're even with that other person in the first place. In some cases, some cases, I, I they were great. And they're fantastic relationships, but still something better came. Can't tell you how many times I thought I was losing all my money. And I freak out and get upset. And then I get something else that made me more and replace it all. Matter of fact, I remember one of the wor most painful moments with money was when I got $450,000 seized because of embezzlement. It was, I was in an investment, had been paying me money for years. I was making all this passive income. It was great, probably too good to be true. And then it turned out that the guy that was handling the investment was embezzling and he was creating fake accounts and the, he killed himself and because uh, he was getting caught. And the government seized all the money and it's been in litigation ever since. I still haven't seen a dime. No, well, maybe I'll see some someday. That first week I was in pain. Oh my, I was suffering. I was like, oh, my money. Oh, I worked so hard for this money. It was so, it was so important to me. I have to get it back. This is not fair. Why did he do that? And then I started to just really use the revealing process, letting go process. And I sat with the pain and I faced it head on. I said, I can handle this pain. And it was intense because money meant a lot to me at that time. And I just kept looking at it saying, you know what? You're not going to slay me. I'm going to be right here with you. I'm going to see what happens if I just keep expanding my consciousness around this pain, really welcoming this pain. And I sat there and I felt it. And something amazing happened in about a week of just really, and really like, like it was almost like burning inside, like a fire was burning something up. Something broke. And I started to laugh. I started to laugh at the whole thing. I started to look at it as if it was a joke. And I said, it's just money. I have more money in the bank. I'm fine. So to say, is it going to change my day to day? 
Am I getting up tomorrow and have the same cup of coffee? Yes. Am I going to go to the same places? Yes. I'm going to hang out with the same people. Yes. Literally, if I don't think about the money, my quality of life is not going to change that much, if at all. Maybe I'm not going to be able to buy a bigger home in the future or something that doesn't really matter. But my enjoyment is right here, right now. And this is really teaching me not to suffer because now I'm way less attached to money. I'm like, hey, money comes, money goes because I know I can make more. And I really even saw how I created this pain for myself. I like, I thought it into being, I mean, if some of you believe in that, but I do. I remember I had a mentor, David Nagel, a money mentor, and he had embezzlement done out for his business for, I think it was $4.8 million. He lost all this money and they took his marketing list and he had to renegotiate all his debts. And he, he had to go into a lot of work to fix the problem. And he hustled and one year later, he earned it all back. He said, it took me years to earn all that. And one year later, I made $4.8 million back. And I realized I was money at that time. I said, you know what? I never, he said, from that point on, I never worried about money again because I knew I could always go make more. And he said, the other thing it did was I never lost money since. I, it's because I just don't worry about it like I did. You see, the whole act of stressing, I'm not going to lose this money. I got to protect this money. I got to keep this money safe. Oh my God, what if somebody steals it? Causes you to create images of something going wrong. And then if those images get created through law of attraction or, or your reticular activating system, however you want to see it, you end up creating this reality where all your money gets taken because that's what you see over and over with your heart. You worry about it. And it comes into being. That's what I'm talking about. And I did that. I kept thinking about him and what he went through. And I thought, what if that happened to me? What if that happened to me? Luckily, it only happened with 450,000, but it happened, right? And, and I say 450 because he was at 4.8 million. Um, and it sucked, but I came out just fine. And I'll tell you, since that day, I haven't worried about money nearly as much. And the funny thing is it's getting easier to come by. I'm, I'm way more relaxed with life, with people, with investments. And because of that, I can see more. I can see clearly. I can say, maybe I should go over there. I'll do this. Or, oh, I'm going over there. Oh, lost a little bit. Do this. Oh, made a little bit more. And I stopped obsessing over every little thing. The ups and downs of the crypto market get 10 times easier. You know, it's a crazy market. Same thing with rejection. The game is played in rejection. All of life's games are played in rejection. But what about women? When women reject you, okay, <laughs> that's hurt. That sucked. Or is it, hey, I'm going to go tell my bro, she rejected me. Good, man. You know, that's, that's probably one of the toughest rejections I ever got. Or is it, she's sweet, man. She's just, you know, I can see she's, she's being sweet about the rejection. She's letting me off easy because she's got a boyfriend. She's just trying to be nice. Do you take it all personally? Do you make it mean something about you? Or do you just say, yeah, I'm probably going to get more rejections than I get girls, women that want to go out with me. And that's normal. And that's that's okay. Because when I get the right one, it's not going to matter anyways. I'm going to be done. You know, if that's what you're looking for. You know, this is life. All of life, hear this, I'm going to say it again, is played in rejection. It's played in the push. It's played in the in what is perceived as the fight, but there really is no fight. It's just calibration. You, every day you get a little rejection, you recalibrate. You get a little rejection from life, you recalibrate. You get a little rejection from life, you recalibrate. And every time you recalibrate, you go deeper into flow states. You start calibrating faster and faster because you start understanding the territory. Is that rejection or is that just a learning process? You calibrate a little bit more, calibrate a little bit more. Cal Pretty soon you're just flowing along like in skiing. You know, I used to have to really work and muscle and fight to stay up on the skis and make a turn and not fall down. And through the years of my skiing, now it's just whew, fly at 100 miles an hour and ride the rails. And I'm making micro adjustments moment to moment, hit the bumps and go doo -doo 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 through bumps. And I used to fall down all day long, barely moving at five miles an hour. Now flying that most days I don't fall down anymore. And it's a blast. It's something amazing. It flows through me. And that's how many micro adjustments did I have to learn through, through falling and failing to be able to do that. That's the way it works. I think that it, you as a man, if you're learning to date or as a woman, 
the game really is let's like go with the man here because it's more so men the game really is played in rejection like when you get really good with rejection you are really coming into your power as a man whether it's business whether it's women whether it's sex whether it's anything when you can keep your heart open in the face of rejection you're going to start getting everything you want because there's no more attachment you might not get it from the person you wanted it from you might get it from somebody better most likely will because as you let go of one somebody else comes in and then you're like wow you know i trust i trust that something bigger has got the whole picture it's got it all worked out for me is going to take care of me when you get to that level of consciousness where you start looking at something's got this together like i'm being taken care of something's guiding this maybe whether it's my super conscious or the spirit or whatever you want to call it god that's when you really understand what they mean by faith you really understand the power of seeing the world from a bigger picture and having this trust because you see the domino effects of synchronicities that create such an amazing experience of life and reality and i think i'll end on this note when we are on our deathbed when we're laying there on our deathbed and we look back on life if we live life this way the way i just talked about fully playing out learning to love failure and you're going to do it a little bit at a time not all at once stepping in to the pain and learning to enjoy the pain like like god i wouldn't worked out today i'm super sore and i love it not the person who's, oh, i don't want to work out and you really learn to love the pain and you laugh at it and you get that good you're gonna look back on life and you're just gonna see nothing but a life full of love and adventures amazing experiences with amazing people not regrets not like most people who are all they're regretting is they're in hospice care or whatever all the things they didn't do all the experiences they didn't have that they dreamed about that were trying to come out of their bodies but they resisted because they they believed in pain you know they believe in the struggle i guess you could say or i don't even know if i've got that right anymore it's all the same thing i guess um that really it's all part of the same dance and it's all beautiful when you're free you can be sad and be like oh i'm having a beautiful sad moment versus i'm sad life sucks i quit you know you can be angry and be like yeah there's a fire inside of me and that's going to take you to courage to go take care of something versus angry like fuck that guy and then you lash out uncontrollably and end up in trouble that is when you're truly free when you're starting to live from that space and that's what the fearless man and true courage is all about you know that's what we do that's what i've always been about is helping people get to that level not really a dating coach more of a personal empowerment success coach that has some emphasis around dating you know you get to that level you're an attractive man i gotta be honest whether it's business money or women or something else and for women that are watching this it works for you too so hopefully you enjoyed this video i did it a little different i just kind of free flowed so let me know what you think definitely put a comment down there uh if you got some value out of this and watch my previous video on no more uh, struggle um how to create happiness i'm looking at it right now how happiness creates success go beyond the struggle that'll help kind of go a little deeper into this or or give you some more insights into this and that one i didn't flow as much it was probably more structured but um i think that's it and uh check out my book the art of fearless seduction with that said remember only the confident really live see you in the next video